Here we have two examples of kits from Airfix that came out circa 1999, 2001, 2002 time frame. The Airfix kit had been discontinued for a few years. I think the last version of the Airfix kit was offered about 1985, maybe 86. Uh, in the late 90s, uh, Airfix determined that there was still an interest in the kit, so they decided to reissue it. I mean, Challenger had been a distant memory. Shuttle operations had been ongoing for many years without a mishap. Uh, so they started work to offer them. However, before they issued theirs, a company in America called NSI uh, asked them if uh, they could offer some of the Airfix kits in Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum packaging with paints, glue, and a paintbrush. So Airfix said, yeah, we'll do them. This was part of a series of three kits that they reissued, the, uh, the Shuttle, the Saturn V, and the uh, Lunar Module, I believe, was the third one. All, all the kits come with, like, three ten, tins of acrylic umbral paint, one tube of glue and one paintbrush, and if they were expecting people to build a decent replica from those, they were sadly mistaken. Um, heck, I can't even do a model with a minimum of uh, even six colors, let alone four. Now, one thing that's really interesting about this kit is uh, it's kind of a reissue of the original Airfix box art. I don't have an example of the original Airfix box art, but this one, what they did was they, they altered it slightly. So the original box art featured the shuttle coming off the external tank and the two solid rocket boosters. And if you note know in the Moonraker section, the Airfix Moonraker basically had the same box art with a slightly altered shuttle paint job. Well, somebody here decided, well, you don't see the boosters come off, and you should see the Earth in the background, so... Let's get rid of the boosters, put the external tank, and just show the orbiter. Also of note, this uh, kit was issued as Space Shuttle Columbia. I think this is probably the last Space Shuttle Columbia kit to be offered with that name in the time period prior to Columbia being lost on STS-107. Now, moving over here... A couple years later, Airfix issued the kit in their own line, featuring their approach to box art in the form of a picture of the actual subject. No artwork, just a picture of the, of the full-size subject. The shot on the cover is from Discovery from mission STS-98, I believe it was. It was the mission that... Uh, John Glenn returned to orbit as a payload specialist and a guinea pig. Very nice artwork. If you look at the decal sheets in these kits, uh, they're both very well done. Both of them feature the newer style NASA meatball marking on the wing. And it's got markings for all six shuttles from Enterprise through Endeavor. Even Challenger is included. And the NSI ones kind of disappeared from the shelves about eh, 2004 or so. People snapped them up after Columbia burned up, although you can occasionally still find one at retail. The Airfix kit didn't get as much widespread issue on this side of the pond, but you can still find a hobby shop with them once in a while. and It's a very nice example of box art from the early 2000s. I'm very happy with them. One thing I will point out too is that Airfix in about 2005 did do one more uh, production run of these kits and I believe they're slated to do one final production run at the end of this year. Basically the box art was a reissue of the original box art which had the external tank and the solid rocket boosters again and had a really ugly red border. I like these examples better. I would say in terms of shuttle packaging that Airfix box with uh, Discovery on the cover there, that's 
probably one of my favorites, because it doesn't really get much better than that. A nice picture of a shuttle lifting off. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> In 2001, Ravel reissued their original Space Shuttle Orbiter. Uh, prior to this, they were issuing Monogram's uh, Space Shuttle Orbiter after retiring the original Ravel kit in around 1989. Uh, the Monogram Orbiter kit stayed in production until about 1999, and the full stack reissue was intended to be the last issue of that kit, then they pretty much retired the mold. As a result, they decided to dust off the old Ravel tooling and reissue it. Uh, this is an example of Space Shuttle Endeavor. This is one of the first kits of, uh, of Endeavor that was issued. Um, plus, also, this was the first 172 scale offering that featured the NASA Meatball logo on the wings and uh, the revised decals featuring those new markings. As you can see, the uh, theme of this model is very similar to the uh, Discovery kit that I showed you, featuring a blue border, except it is dark blue this time instead of light blue. This reflects the fact that uh, Ravel and Monogram were officially combined into one company, and the company was known as Ravel Monogram. Today it's known as Ravel USA. Um, the funny thing is, is there are actually examples of the Monogram Space Shuttle kit offered in Monogram packaging, Monogram, Ravel Monogram packaging, where on this corner it actually said Ravel and Monogram. And then there was even uh, one production run of the Monogram Orbiter done with Ravel packaging. And the only way you could tell that it was a Monogram shuttle was the box art was very was identical to what the previous Monogram kits had. It was nice to see this one come back out. Um, and this kit was available for you know, about six or seven years. They disappeared off the shelf circa 2007, if I recall correctly. Here we have an example of what Ravel US was doing in the early 2000s. This was this particular kit is of the Ravel orbiter only with the Space Lab. And this came out circa 2007, 2006-2007, I believe. The book the uh, the kit was interesting because it did come with a book on the space shuttle program. Uh, put out, I believe, from the uh, Detail and Scale stable. The book is not bad. It's got some nice pictures in there, although it's little more than a uh, primer and an introduction to the shuttle program for people that have not researched it very well. But uh, this was the first Ravel USA kit to come out in 1144th after Airfix did theirs. And I had a lot of hopes for this when it came out that it would include a better decal sheet. Um, unfortunately they didn't even do that. Thankfully Ravella Germany came to the rescue about a year later with their Space Shuttle with Boosters kit. Another a, a Ravel reissue which included much better decal sheet. Uh, but this kind of showcases box art from this time period. The guy that uh, painted the cover artwork of Discovery here did a pretty good job in my opinion. Showing uh, Discovery at Wheels Touchdown. Of course funny enough uh, the decal sheet and the box art do not show any of the NASA Meatball logos. This has just got the uh, the NASA Worm logos that were used up through the uh, late 1990s on the orbiter. By Worm, when you see NASA spelled out N-A-S-A, Worm is the name of the font that they used and it does kind of look like a crawling worm. Uh, Administrator Dan Golden, circa 1998, dictated, let's get, get rid of the worm, let's go back to the old blue NASA circle with the 
with the white text and the red swoosh and we'll call that the meatball and and everything in NASA's fleet had to be repainted from the old paint job to the newer style or in the case of the NASA meatball the older style many airplanes took that logo and did a stylized 90s version of it using the original red swoosh and the uh, and the older style text these kits you could find at Hobby Lobby for not a lot of money they were probably a little overpriced for the plastic but the book is a nice uh, nice bonus